Welcome to Skin Care Moxie, the podcast to educate, inform, and empower you to care for and love the skin you're in. Presented by The A Method, the medical grade skincare brand co founded by induction therapy CEO Angelia Insko in collaboration with renowned cosmetic dermatologist Dr. Tina Alster. Welcome, listeners. I'm Kelly Fletcher, co host of Skincare Moxie. Each week on this podcast, we dig deep into the topic of skincare, dispelling myths and sharing knowledge so that you, the consumer, can get the information you need to make informed purchasing decisions. I co host this podcast with Angelia Insko, co founder of the A Method medical grade skincare line and inventor of the collagen pin microneedling device. What you may not know is that the A in the A Method is a nod to renowned cosmetic dermatologist. Dr. Tina Alster, who is co-formulator of the A-Method and the namesake of the brand. And so, Angelia, today we have a huge surprise for our listeners. Yes, Kelly, we've been waiting for this moment a long time, and we're so excited to welcome my friend and colleague, Dr. Tina Alster. Drum roll, please, to Skincare Moxie. Dr. Alster, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you, Angelia and Kelly. I'm so happy to be here. Well, I'm especially pumped about today's episode because Dr. Alster, I've totally become a fangirl of yours. I've been researching you over the past year or so. I've read all about you. Angelia speaks so highly of you. And listeners, I must say that Dr. Alster is not only absolutely gorgeous, her credentials are over the top. <laughs> Dr. Tina Alster, MD, is the founding director of the Washington Institute of Dermatologic Laser Surgery and is a clinical professor of dermatology at Georgetown University Medical Center in Washington, D.C. She received her BS and MD degrees with highest honors from Duke University and completed her dermatology residency at Yale University. She's a world-recognized leader in dermatologic laser surgery and has published hundreds of articles and eight textbooks on the subject. Dr. Alster maintains leadership and board positions in numerous professional and national organizations and has served as a consultant to several skincare and device companies, including Lancome and La Mer. Her commitment to teaching and mentoring others is evident in her establishment of scholarship endowments for women pursuing careers in medicine at Duke University. She has received numerous accolades by her peers, including the prestigious Mentorship and Legacy Awards from the Women's Dermatologic Society. And in addition to serving as an expert on TV and radio, she has been acknowledged in America's Top Doctors town and country's best cosmetic surgeons, America's Elite 1000, Allure's Influencer of the Year, L Genius Awards, and the Washingtonian's Best Doctors. So she has quite the CV. She's consistently ranked among the nation's top 1% of physicians in dermatology, and that is according to U.S. News and World Report. So Dr. Alster, when Angelia and I were brainstorming on topics to discuss with you, we had a hard time deciding because they're a number of things that you could address. But the one we settled on is talking to you about your top four product recommendations for anti-aging skincare routines. We know the research that I did indicates that women 50 plus, that is our number one concern is aging. And I think that probably is going to dip down into further into thirties and forties. So on last week's show, we talked about a recent trend called skinimalism, which entertains the assumption that we've all been led to believe that more is more when it comes to skincare products. The more active ingredients you pack in and apply, the healthier your skin will be. You'll get that magic glow. But just like living life to excess always backfires, eventually we learned from Angelia that excessive skincare efforts can be bad too. So I'll start by asking you, do you agree that multiple products are necessary to ob- obtain great skin? I'll use a gym analogy. It depends on the results you want to achieve. If you go to the gym every day and only do cardio, you won't gain as much muscle mass. If you only work out your legs, there's a good chance you'll end up with great legs and saggy arms. The solution is to find the balance that is right for you because ultimately, if you know you just can't stick to a routine with more than a few steps, you would be better off selecting the two or three products that will best address your personal skin concerns. That's a great analogy. And I'm definitely one of those people Four products in the morning and four products at night are about as much as I'm willing to do. So let's talk about the anti-aging process. Most of our listeners are concerned with anti-aging and just crave information on what products work, which active ingredients work best, how and when to use them. Can you 
talk to us a bit about what happens to the skin as it ages? Oh, sure. Skin changes as we age are related to environmental factors, genetic makeup, nutrition, and other factors. The greatest single factor, though, is sun exposure. That's not surprising being a dermatologist that I tell you that, right? You can see this importance by comparing areas of your body that have regular sun exposure with areas that are protected from sunlight. There are other things as well. You know, collagen production generally begins to slow down in your late 20s and early 30s. There are numerous other things that happen as the skin ages, and the earlier you begin to combat them, the higher the long-term benefit. With aging, the outer skin layer or epidermis thins, as does the dermis or deeper layer of the skin. But chronologic aging is not as important as sun damage or what we term photo-aging when it comes to damaging the skin. Cumulative sun damage destroys dermal collagen, and collagen, as you know, is responsible for the skin's foundation and structure. Brown pigmented spots, we often call them age spots or even liver spots, also occur as we age. The spots are not related to aging, but are instead related to chronic or long-standing sun exposure. Thus, the medical term for this type of brown spot is solar lentigo. Also, as you age or get older, skin strength and elasticity reduces. The changes in the connective tissue is referred to as elastosis, and once again, is more noticeable in sun-exposed areas. Solar elastosis produces the leathery, weather-beaten appearance common to farmers, sailors, and others who spend a large amount of time outdoors, or who have made a nasty habit of frequenting tanning salons. When we age, our skin's blood vessels also become more fragile, causing the skin to bruise more easily. Profound or intense bruising with bleeding under the skin after minimal trauma is a condition referred to medically as senile purpura. Also, as we age, our oily glands, what we refer to as sebaceous glands, produce less oil. After menopause, women produce less oil, which can result in dryness and itchiness. And other things that can occur like skin tags and brown scaly bumps, which we call SKs or separate keratoses, or I lovingly refer to them as barnacles, are more common as we age. These are totally benign and they occur because the skin's natural exfoliation process slows down. This is not to mention the changes that occur in the hair and nails, both of which tend to thin over time. I like the the barnacle <laughs> terminology <laughs> because I feel like every time I go to the dermatologist, I'm like, can you get this skin tag and this skin tag? And it just, they seem to be never ending. Is there anything that you can do to protect yourself against developing skin tags? Is that a sunscreen? The problem with skin tags or keratoses is that there's really not much you can prevent um, that you can do to prevent them. The main thing is that um, if you can gently exfoliate the skin or cleanse regularly, that makes a difference. That doesn't mean that you should be over scrubbing your skin, but as we age, because our skin doesn't turn over naturally anymore, you really need to make sure that you use a cleanser that's suitable to exfoliating. And that's really tough because most people over scrub their skin. But I do think that if you use a, uh, an effective cleanser, and we can talk about that a little bit, it will really prevent you from having as many or maybe as scaly a keratosis or skin tag as you normally would. So I'm assuming then also we should be exfoliating our entire bodies with some sort of body scrub because skin tags can develop anywhere on your body pretty much, right? Well, the problem with over scrubbing the skin is that you can over dry the skin and, and over scrubbing creates these little um, cuts in the skin or abrasions. And that way, sometimes infections can, can get in there, bacteria, and can cause folliculitis or inflammation around follicles. So you really have to be careful about not over scrubbing. I think what happens is that people don't actually cleanse their entire body unless you're bathing, of course, but most people take quick showers. And so it was, it's nice if you actually, at the very least, rub the cleanser all over your body. I'm not really keen on over scrubbing with some of these very harsh salt or grainy scrubs, because like I say, they can create little injuries in the skin. I think the main thing is that if you have a soft washcloth, or I actually love to exfoliate using my uh, Clarisonic brush, which are hard 
hard to get these days, but if any of you listeners have a Clarisonic brush, that's great to use in the shower. And I use it not only on my face, but on my neck and chest and on other areas of my body that I want to exfoliate gently. And I much prefer that to using a harsh scrub. That's good advice. I have a Clarisonic and I noticed that there's a new version of one out on the market that is the bristles aren't like bristles. It's all it's all rubber, the whole device. Right. That's a, that's a silicone containing device, that's which silicone. is also good. I'm just lo- I'm in love with my Clarisonic brush and I've been treating it very gently so that I get its longevity. And I've had the same brush for over three years. Of course, I've changed the brush head and keep it really clean. But if you, you pick your favorite exfoliant and like, again, I like to use the brush or some of these silicone type of vibrating exfoliants that you can use in the shower. And I think that's the best way to exfoliate is in the shower. What's your favorite exfoliator? Well, the thing is, is that I I use my A Method Silky C Cleanser, to be honest with you, because it brightens my skin as well as hydrates it without over drying it. And I use that with my brush, not only to remove makeup, but on my body. Now, again, uh, that may be a higher end type of uh, cleanser than most people want to use. I, the one thing that you can save money on, dear listener, is by using an inexpensive cream or lotion cleanser or even something like Dove because you won't over dry your skin that way. So I do like the idea of using a mild cleanser with a brush or one of these silicone vibrating exfoliators, as opposed to something that contains a lot of grainy, bristly products or substances that can scrape the skin. That's great advice. And I've never even thought to, you know, we talk sometimes on the podcast about we have to treat our skin holistically and we always focus on our face and we forget about our neck and our decollete and everywhere else. And so thank you for that, because I'm definitely going to employ that in my skincare routine from now on. Well, wow. I mean, that's a lot that comes with aging and changes. It's a lot to try to stave off. No wonder the skincare industry is in the billions of dollars each year. Well, the good news is that you can achieve great skin with a minimal number of products. Effective skincare regimens don't need to be complicated. Well, that's good news. But before we get into your product recommendations, I'd love for you to explain to our listeners the differences between over-the-counter skincare products that say you get at the local drugstore, department store, beauty counters versus medical grade skincare products. I think there's always some confusion there. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, over-the-counter skincare products have been designed to work on much of the population. The concentration of their active ingredients are relatively low in order to reduce the risk of negative side effects, such as dryness and irritation. Medical-grade skincare products, on the other hand, are produced to target a certain skin condition and are generally more potent. In my own dermatologic practice, I partnered with Angelia's company to formulate specific products that would address the needs of my patients. They were researched and developed to develop the optimal concentration of the active ingredient to affect the desired skin changes. In general, a more concentrated or higher amount of active ingredient leads to more profound skin changes and better looking skin. In addition to having a higher content of the active ingredient, medical grade skincare products have the purest form of that ingredient. They are made using the latest technology and can be adapted to address particular skin issues. Over-the-counter products are usually less expensive than medical-grade skincare products. This is because lower quality ingredients are used, which greatly impacts the product's effectiveness. You get what you pay for, so to speak. Most over-the-counter products are designed to sit on the surface of the skin whereas medical-grade skincare products have been formulated to better penetrate the skin and thereby produce greater clinical effects. Well, absolutely. I remember when I started using medical-grade skincare, I was in my 30s, and I'm glad I started when I did because I think it's really helped the aging process. And, and I'm lucky that when I was younger, I always wore makeup to out in the sun because I was, didn't want to be seen without makeup. <laughs> And little did I know it was actually saving my skin. So I would love for you to speak to some of the the regulations on what the FDA classifies as medical grade and how the medical grade skincare industry is, is somewhat regulated. Well, the FDA does closely regulate medical grade skincare products. Most of these are marked as pharmaceuticals. By law, they must have 99.9% pure active ingredients. 
Before they can be used by the public, there must be scientific evidence showing that the skincare product is beneficial and that it does what it advertises. By the time a medical grade anti-aging serum hits the market, multiple studies have been performed demonstrating its safety and effectiveness in reducing fine lines and wrinkles. This is not the case with over-the-counter cosmetics. Over-the-counter skincare products allow you, as the customer, to self-diagnose your skin and select the skincare product that you think is best. However, when you use a medical-grade skincare product, it is a trained medical professional who examines your skin and prescribes products with ingredients that will adequately address the issue you have. I really like the idea of thinking about medical-grade skincare as medicine for the skin and as a pharmaceutical. So let's just get down to the brass tacks of the topic today. I know our listeners are anxious to hear what four products Dr. Tina Alster recommends that we have in our skincare regimens to combat aging. Well, I'll break it down into four products to use in the morning and four products to use at night. In general, I tell my patients to protect during the day and repair or rejuvenate at night while they sleep. What I mean by that is in addition to using a mineral sunscreen during the day to protect the skin from the sun, I recommend the use of a topical antioxidant like the A-Method C antioxidant gel, which contains 20% of scorbic acid. This does double duty as a skin brightener and also further protects the skin from the sun through its antioxidant effect. So the four products I use during the day include a liquid cleanser. Like I said before, I like the Silky C Cleanser followed by application of the sea gel and BB cream, which contains mineral sunscreen ingredients, as well as collagen boost eye cream, which contains peptides to enhance collagen formation and reduce wrinkling around the eyes. At night, I repair or rejuvenate the skin using a retinol containing cream with at least a 0.5% concentration to improve blood flow and induce neocollagenesis after removing my makeup with a cream cleanser. Once again, I apply the collagen boost eye cream as well as a moisturizer on top if I feel dry. My rule of thumb is that I don't want to waste time applying anything on my skin that isn't doing something specific. And since I limit my regimen to no more than a few minutes, this simple three or four step program works best for me and most of my patients who also tend to be busy people. Well, that's all good to know. My regimen is very similar to what you outlined, and I like to augment with a few other products like a mask or, or the Amazing Pill, which is a product in the A method that is really good to use once a month or so in between treatments in your dermatologist's office. So all these medical grade skincare products are available at the amethod.com. So Dr. Oster, fall is upon us. The weather is changing. I can feel a little bit of fall in the air. What adjustments, if any, in our skincare routines do we need to be making? The biggest adjustment when the weather turns colder and drier is to add a moisturizer to your regimen, particularly at night, or switch from a gel cleanser to a cream cleanser that does not remove excess oil or cause the skin to become overly dry. Otherwise, I don't feel that changes are necessary. The same active ingredients, and we talked about them before, the sea gel and retinol products, can continue to be used year round. So I'd like to pivot the conversation back to Angelia now. Angelia, as a formulator and someone who is constantly scanning for new ingredients and better ways to formulate to get maximum results, I'm interested in what innovations you see going on in the skincare industry. What are some of the trends and innovations? So Kelly, there's a few things that I've noticed that we're paying a little more attention to. Multifunctional products. This supports the skin minimalism trend and everything Dr. Alster has talked about today. Women want one product that addresses multiple skincare concerns. There's also a trend that's literally called the cult of CBD, which confirms that the CBD trend is not going away. And that's understandable because CBD and skincare products is beneficial. And really, we're just starting to see the beginning of CBD and skincare. Another trend is go with the glow. People have tired of sitting home during the pandemic and are looking to get that glow. Do we look that is associated with healthy skin and the cakey and overdone makeup look is out and natural looking skin is in. Very interesting. Thank you for that, Angelia. And Dr. Oster, thank you again for joining us. It has been so valuable to have your voice on this podcast. And I don't think there's anyone more qualified in the world, really, to give skincare advice than you. And I hope you'll join us again sometime soon. 
would be my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad that I could finally join you. Yes, I know you're busy. So we appreciate you taking time out of your schedule. And listeners, you can follow Dr. Alster on social media at The A Method by Dr. Tina Alster and on Twitter at Dr. Tina Alster. And Alster is spelled A-L-S-T-E-R. Thank you for joining us on Skincare Moxie. If you'd like to follow the podcast on social media, you can follow us on Facebook at The A Method and on Instagram at The A Method. You can also follow the hashtag Skincare Moxie and Moxie is spelled M-O-X. IE. If you'd like to subscribe to the podcast so it comes directly to your inbox each week, visit theamethod.com and click the podcast icon at the top right of the screen, and you will get an email alert every week when our latest episode goes live so you can tune in. Finally, Angelia has agreed to answer your skincare questions personally if you email her at angelia at theamethod.com. And also live chat is now available at theamethod.com. So if you have a question, you can chat with a licensed esthetician at any time who will help you get on the right skincare routine for your skin. Special thanks to our sound engineer, Chris Hill of Knoxville-based HumblePod at humblepod.com. Thanks everyone. Until next week.